It's £25 per person, per head. And don't forget, we've got to cater for our Michelle because she's one of those necrophiliacs. <laughs> I'm thrilled to be here because me and my boyfriend have had an argument over football, of all things, yeah, which is very off-brand for me. I know you didn't see that coming. Because he's really big into football and he wants to go and watch the World Cup in Qatar. And I'm not big into football. This is how I feel about football, yeah? I feel about football the way his wife and kids feel about me. Like... <laughs> it's a completely unnecessary way of spending a Saturday afternoon. Um, <laughs> For the posh Radio 4 audience in the room, I just want you to know I'm not having an affair. He's really gay, he's really mine. I'm sucking legit dick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, I think people think just because I'm like camp and gay, that's why I don't like football. But I've actually given football a go. Like when the men's Euros was on, I went to the local pub to watch an episode. And... <laughs> It's weird, it's weird. I didn't know what to wear, because I thought, if I go like this, face full of bronzer, I'm gonna die, I'm not ready for death yet. No, I've only just got IBS. And <laughs> so I went to my dad's house to borrow his brown gilet, or as he calls it, a gillet. And if I walked into the pub, and I was like, I don't know why I've spent so much time and energy on my fashion, because I walk into the pub when the match is on, and I was like, this is very embarrassing. Everyone else is wearing the same shirt. <laughs> Football is very strange. What a fashion faux pas. And another thing I have issues with at the minute, because I don't know if you know, but hate crimes against queer people are on the rise. Do we have any gays in? No, we burned them. Fine. <laughs> Fine. Hate crimes against queer people are on the rise. And I'm really scared because I'm melodramatic, but I'm worried that we're going to have to start using Polari again. Now, for those of you who don't know, <laughs> that was a gay. That was a gay. <laughs> Burn it, odd. Boy band, get it, get it. <laughs> Thank God you're here, sister. But, <laughs> so Polari, for those of you that don't know, is it's like the secret gay language. So in the old days when I was illegal, if you wanted to know, no, there was, there was a time when I was illegal, Kel surprise. And so if I wanted to know, so if I wanted to know you were gay and on brand, I'd come up to you and speak in Polari. So I'd be like, hello, ducky. And if you went, hello, ducky, I'd be like, I'm in with a chance. I'm in with a chance. Buy it a drink. But if I went, hello, ducky, and you went, all right, I was like, so please, time to leave. But I've been looking into it just in case I need to use it. And the language of Polari is really making me laugh. Because they have words like naff, which means not very good, bevy for a drink, and tara, which means see you later. And I was like, naff, bevy, tara. I was like, is this gay or is it scouse? <laughs> so if I were to say you were really fit, I would say you are fabuloso, right? And I just thought, fabuloso. I thought, ooh, very sneaky gays. <laughs> <laughs> How do we get away with that for so long? And my concern is about using it is because my mother, so I'm from Manchester, and my mum can barely, you know, decipher English. So I'm worried if I have to use Polari because my mum gets English wrong all the time. Like, my cousin Michelle is a celiac, which means she's scared of bread. And, <laughs> no, honestly, a bit of pelvis. Ah! And we're booking a family dinner, and it's my turn to book it. And so my mum rings me to remind me of everyone's dietary requirements. And she was like, Stephen, don't forget the rules. Don't go in and get any of your showbiz ideas. It's 25 pound per person per head and don't forget we've got to cater for our Michelle because she's one of those necrophiliacs <laughs> I was like that's not what she does mum she's scared of the loaf that's all that's happening there <laughs> and I know I was mean to my boyfriend earlier so his name's Rich um, and he's 37 and he's a lawyer which is very smart on my part <laughs> And at the start of the pandemic, it brought us closer together because we had to have time to spend with each other. So we developed little pet names for each other. Like, he started calling me his little monkeykins, and I started calling him my furlough. And... <laughs> But the thing, I often remember the grass isn't always greener. Because you know, you go out, you think, he's fit, like, that's a nice little bit to gobble, gobble, gobble. Um, and... <laughs> But I have to remember the grass isn't always greener because, like, for example, before I went out my writ, I had um, I did a degree in French, and as part of the course, I had to go and live in France for a year. And I thought it was going to be like a Hilary Duff film. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'd move over, I'd work at a boulangerie, and then I'd fall in love. And this French man invited me in to live in his chateau, and I'd never have to perform at the Pleasance in Islington ever again. <laughs> 
But that didn't quite happen. But me and my friends, while we're all over there, we all did have a bit of a romance while we're away. Like my friend Kate, she got with this guy called Florent, and they were together for a whole year. Now they're married, living in Nice, living my dream, bitch. <laughs> then there's my friend Sam. She got with a guy for a semester, and his name was Nicola. Nicola. Fit, right? And I got with a guy as well while we're there, and his name was Kevin. <laughs> it wasn't even Kevin, it was bloody Kevin. <laughs> I went all the way to France and found the only guy from Stockport. <laughs> Thank you so much, Fabi. I've been Stephen. See you again. Thank you.